Everybody, it's Tyler at the Texas Cup, checking with team number 2468, Team Appreciate. And I'm here with Andrew, Druve, and Ryan. And uh, we're gonna be talking more about uh, this robot here, a uh, new 2021 robot that they brought to the table. Uh, of course, checking out intake, uh, cool spindexer, uh, nice shooter, climber, uh, some interesting code we'll be talking about as well too. Of course, this team uh, known uh, not only for fantastic robots, but also a great chairman's team. Uh, won their group this year at the Infinite Recharge at home, uh, as well as uh, taking it to uh, state chairmans in 2020 as well, district chairmans this year too. So can't wait to learn more about this robot all here on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Andrew, take us through the power cell cycle on this robot. We're gonna start out with the uh, intake here. Tell me more about the material, uh, kind of why you went this route, maybe any of your iterations you had along the way. Yeah. So this year, we really wanted to focus on getting a wide intake, so driver-centric. So to do that, we basically had our frame perimeter and we went as wide as possible. So first we have our intake roller, idler, that stays out the whole match. This helps us with geometry to feed in the butt. Can you put intake down? And so our intake is three and a half balls wide. So next we have our ramp. So last year we had a lot of issues with jamming and trying to funnel one wide. So we left all the way three wide for the ramp and then into the spindexer. So originally we had an omni wheel in the spindexer because we thought, hey, it'll be easier to flick out with an omni, right? Sure, yeah. So we had issues with the balls actually varying in size. And so there'd be dead spots and we'd have jams. So what we went with was we went with brushes because we couldn't find anything that would slip on the balls. So the trick with the brushes, right, when it gets jammed, it shoves only the front one and it slides past the back sure. one. Yeah, yeah. And so it allows us to hold five balls and spin them. So for leaving the spindexer, we have an omni wheel that flicks it. It just barely touches back here so this can go around. And then this is run by a Neo and it transfers into the shooter. It's have you guys had pre shooter? Have you guys had any issues with uh, with intaking uh, this kind of this dead zone area up here? So we in regards had to a, balls kind of pop out or anything? We've had a couple issues. There are two dead zones on our main one. One's here but we can fix this by rolling in or sure. putting this up and down. Uh, the other issue we've had is it sometimes gets stuck here, but we can just quickly put on, climb arms up and down to get it unstuck. That makes sense. One other thing I just want to ask about our, our this, this kind of brush here. So we see some teams that do the divider, some do kind of the open system. What yeah. made you choose uh, this route? So there's a lot of learning from last year. So last year we all funneled in one through a cascade. Yeah. And we found out that really anything, if you try to tell the balls where to go, it jams. If you give them room and then you let them go wherever they want to, then they jam less. So we wanted a completely open design. And it's also a lot easier just to do a central spinner. Yeah. So actually when we made this, we had an interesting design because we didn't know what worked, right? It's hard to prototype something big. So down here you see a bearing for the bottom plate. We have that so we can swap it out for a hub. So when we can test it, then we can test bottom moving with it or without. The issue we had with bottom moving with it is the balls would sit here and they just roll in place. Yeah, gotcha. That makes sense. Well, take us through, uh, you know, of course, you talked about your kicker a little bit. Uh, come up into your shooter. Love to hear more about uh, big flywheel looks like. Uh, yep. Interest to see how much this weighs and kind of how you went about that process. So our shooter is very, very similar to last year. It's almost the same. So we have a turret, 180 degree turret out the back. Uh, we have a hood, goes up 30 degrees, so we get a nice adjustable shot. Yeah. Our flywheel is actually a steel... Uh, ring placed on a HTPE hub and so it's a three pound flywheel with all the mass on the outside and so we tested a lot of wheels like fair lane wheels and we were getting them up to higher RPM so they'd sort of tear apart and so we went for the steel and we were thinking hey we need to put something in the outside so it grips the balls well but we found out the steel actually really well grips the balls. Sure and it gets your compression more consistent too right because we're doing a fair line or something that's going to expand a little bit as it goes yeah. through. And this doesn't uh, degrade. Yeah that totally makes sense. Um, Looking uh, on here as well too, 
uh, from your, your material that you use, like this HDPE, that sort of thing, what made you uh, choose this type of material uh, for the contact with the uh, power cells? So, for the white, all we chose is we chose Doran, because mostly for our manufacturability, because we can laser cut Doran on our laser, oh, we cool. can't laser cut any metals or anything. And so, this thin Doran allows us to bend, and so everything else in the shooter, pretty much all the gray bits, we print them on our Mark Forge, so we can easily make completely custom parts. Uh, so take us through next, uh, it's going to be your climber. I know you guys are doing a little bit of work on it right now as yep. we caught you kind of in place uh, for that. But talk to me a little bit about it. looks like you might be able to do uh, potentially some translating on the uh, switch as well. Yep, so initially what we do, we have it down so they can be longer, so we need three stages instead of four, right? So as they go up, we have them pneumatically actuated up. So when they're up, we have strings that hard stop them to the right angle. And so... If you look in the back, you might not be able to see it very well, but we have a winch central in the back sure. between the two drive rails, and we have a stringing system to get it up into each tubing. So it's continuous, it goes up to the bar, uh, three stages, and we have constant four springs to spring it up. So we only pull down, pretty much. Okay. So we are planning to have translation on the bar, but we didn't quite translate because it bends the arms apart. So this is our clutch. We had a servo here that pulls this apart, as so it allows the clutch to spin. Sure. So that's for locking on the bar when we're where we want to be. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah. we have a motor with bevel gears and color wheel on that side, but we had to take it off. Fair, fair enough on that. And things happen during the competition, right? Yep. You just got to kind of move forward. Uh, so we're going to bring in Drew here. He's going to talk a little bit more about some of your code. Uh, I know we're going to show a little bit on the computer. Uh, and then, of course, any other sensors you want to touch on your robot, too. Yeah, so I think you did a good job. Uh, one thing to note, all of our motors on our robot are brushless and have encoders on them. So we track position for things like our flywheel, our hood, and our turret even for our climb and spindexer. Um, that allows us to do things like current sensing and PID to position. We have different presets for all of our shooter locations so we can shoot in various places across the field. As you can see right here, we've got a path planner that our team has been making for five years. And this allows us to make autos interactively through drawing. So if I scroll to the right, you can see this background image of a field for the infinite re recharge uh, game, right? And what you do is you run this VI which is basically the file system. And it lets you start your robot anywhere on the field, and you can move your robot around and put different waypoints, which are places you want your robot to be at, right? So if you see, we've got a waypoint right here and a waypoint right here, and then you can put one down here. Um, this auto smooth button helps us do math to get the most optimal trajectory, and this basically gives us a path that the robot should be doing. And then we write this down to a file on the RoboRio, and during matches, we read off the data and then convert it into ticks for our motor. So um, some of the stuff that we've been adding, we take all of this data and we integrate it with our IMU and other sensors sure. to localize us. And, and that's kind of how you uh, compensate for drift a little bit too, right? Then? Yeah, so yeah. we take this and it takes our velocities and our deltas between our angle for each 20 millisecond time step. And then we integrate that with where our IMU thinks we should be at to correct for any drift. And then the latest thing that we added is a command sequencer. So obviously while you're making autos, you want to be doing different things. For this year's game, you want to be intaking balls, shooting, right? So we added what's called a command sequencer, which I scroll. Uh, so if I scroll right here, you can see you can see different commands. So it reads off of our lab view project and it finds all the different subsystems we have and specific commands like setting a flywheel preset or intaking or extending the climb arms. And then we're able to integrate that in the middle of our path. So if I pull up this, this is one of our auto paths for this year. It basically goes, it starts intaking, you can see right there. And then it goes and it picks up these two, right? So uh, we drop basically this intake block, right? And that tells the, sub, the intake subsystem to turn on, to actuate down, and then start intaking balls. And we can chain a bunch of these. So this part is the intaking path. We append onto this with things like setting our flywheel preset and then turning our spindexer on so we can get balls up and out of the bot. Last thing I just want to ask is a general question. Uh, earlier here at the Texas Cup, I heard the game announcer uh, say 2468. You guys are 2468, right? So how... Uh, you know, what do you have to say to people who are calling you 2468 and not 2468? We can't appreciate it for that. 2468, who do we appreciate? 2468 just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, fair enough. Well, you know what does work is your team, 2468. Once again, thanks for taking the time to speak with us about your robot. I've uh, been following your team for many years. Can't wait to see how they do. Futures, I know you guys are seniors, but want to uh, wish you best of luck moving forward and, uh, of course, in all your first journeys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.
We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.